whisper into your ears and spray. Father, Son, and Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, the Son, and Spirit. Good morning, class. Okay. First, I'll check the attendance. Just raise your right hand if your name is called. Carbonilla Lilo, Dugaria Kenneth, Gravino Carl, Integro Marwin, Abarji Milin, Abejero Vanessa, Arbun Evelyn, Cabanas Josephine, and Buenas Carmen. Okay, so we'll start with our discussion on chapter 7. The previous lesson, chapter 6, is about the principles of teaching based on the principles of learning, which is vital for this chapter on management of instruction. The principles of learning provide additional insights into what makes people learn most effectively. The principles have been discovered, tested, and used in practical situations. By knowing some principles on, on how learning takes place, we will be guided on how to teach. Learning takes place properly when it results in satisfaction. Learning is an evo evolutionary process, sometimes a painful process. It is emotional, intellectual, and is a consequence of an experience. An effective and meaningful learning experience is a product of careful planning. Planning starts with defining the directions to take, in which case efforts are geared toward a specific set of objectives. It concludes the preparation of purposeful teaching learning activities and the provision of a wholesome classroom atmosphere that will provide the best opportunities for an effective teaching learning process. At the end of this lesson, the students can explain the significance of properly constructed objectives, derive objective from goals, determine appropriate behavioral objectives that tap into three domains of learning, evaluate the alignment of objectives and content of a lesson plan. So what is a lesson plan? So it is a systematic process that involves pre-planning, active planning, review planning, and closure planning. So in pre-planning phase, the teacher envisions the possible outcomes and approaches to employ. In active planning, this is the actual writing of the lesson plan. The review planning is the fine tuning of the lesson plan and the closure planning phase is the pre-identification of the criteria for the evaluation. There are sources of learning objectives. So, constitutional aims. So, these are the goals or objectives that are geared toward the realization of the national development goals provided by Batas Pambansa Bilang 232 Educational Act of 1982. Institutional mission. So, these objectives set by the institution to carry out its vision. The curriculum goals are the goals and objectives connected to programs. The course or subject goals are derived from programs, program activities. Unit objectives, also referred to as classroom objectives, which divide course into several units, and lesson objectives, also known as specific instructional objectives. So, objectives. An objective describes a performance that teachers expect from learners to exhibit before they are considered competent. There are three domains of learning, the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. The cognitive domain, learning in this aspect, refers to the mental process like memorization, ability to think, analyze, and solve problems. In affective, those that deal with the development of attributes like genuine interest, desirable attitudes, values, and commitment as expected learning outcomes. And in the psychomotor, objectives that deal with physical and 
kinesthetic skills including keyboarding, using technical instruments, and other skills. So these are the three domains of learning the cognitive, effective, and cycle. So there are criteria of measurable objectives. So measurable objectives are specific measures used to determine whether or not the goal is successfully achieved. The objective are instructions about what the students are expected to do. Mayor described the characteristics of SMART goals. Stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bounded. So specific, the goal must be clear and unambiguous without unnecessary trimmings. Measurable, it stresses the need for concrete standard criteria for measuring progress. Attainable, the goals are neither out of reach nor below standard performance. Relevant, stresses the importance of choosing goals that matter and purpose-driven. Time-bounded, stresses the importance of formulating goals within a time frame, giving them a target date. There are levels of cognitive objectives. So Bloom's and Anderson's taxonomy. So on the left side is Bloom's, while on the right side is Anderson's taxonomy. So from knowledge evaluation and from remembering to creating. So Bloom's identifies six levels within the cognitive domain from simple recognition of facts as the lowest through increasingly more, more complex levels to the highest level which was identified as evaluation. During 1900s, Anderson, the former student of Bloom, made a significant improvements to Bloom, Bloom's original structure. So from remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So definitions of Anderson's revised taxonomy. Remembering. Can the students recall or remember the information? So this, these are the verbs that uh, relate to remembering. Define, duplicate, list, memorize, recall, repeat, reproduce, state. In understanding, can the student explain ideas or concepts? So these verbs include classify, describe, discuss, explain. In applying, does, can the student use the information in a new way? So choose, demonstrate, dramatize, employ, illustrate, interpret. Analyzing. Can the students distinguish between the different paths? Appraise, compare, contrast, criticize, differentiate, discriminate, distinguish, examine, experiment, question, test. In evaluating, can the student justify a stand or decision? So appraise argue, defend, judge, select, support, and evaluate. Creating. Can the student create new product or point of view? So assemble, construct, create, design, develop, formulate, right? So these are the verbs that relates to the Anderson's revised taxon. So levels of psychomotor objectives. The psychomotor domain of learning is focused on process and skills involving the mind and body. It is the domain of which classifies objectives dealing with physical movement and coordination. So the perception or the awareness. So recognize, distinguish, notice, touch, hear, feel. Set or readiness, arrange, prepare, get set. Uh, guided response or attempt, imitate, copy, follow, try. Mechanism, the basic proficiency, make, perform, shape, complete. The complex overt response or the expert proficiency, coordinate, fix, demonstrate. Adaptation, adaptation proficiency, is adjust, integrate, solve. Origination, create proficiency. Design, formulate, modify, redesign, and troubleshoot. So these are the levels of psychomotor objectives from perception into origination. Levels of affective objectives. The taxonomy is ordered according to the principles of internalization. Internalization refers to the process whereby a person's affect toward an object passes through a general awareness level to a point where the effect is internalized and consistently guides the person's behavior. 
So, from receiving, responding, valuing, organization, and characterization, characterization by value set. So, these are the levels of affective objectives. Receiving, to differentiate, to attempt, to listen. Responding, to follow, to command, to volunteer, to spend, to claim. Valuing, to subsidize, to support, to debate. Organization, to discuss, to theorize, to balance, to examine. Characterization by value or value set. To revise, to require, to avoid, to resist, to resolve. So, there are guiding principles for a content. So, content selection, the validity, significance, balance, self-sufficiency, interest, utility, learnability, feasibility. In the selection process, the content must be aligned with the goals of education and the institution's vision and mission. Validity, the content must be applicable to different situations, trends, and issues. Significance, content must be reflective of the current needs of the community and the society. Balance, content must not be confined to a particular class, status, person, or place. Self-sufficiency, content preparation should afford an opportunity for self-learning. Interest, content should be able to develop interest in the learner. Utility, content should, be provide, should provide the necessary information for knowledge and skills appreciation. Learnability, language use must be simple, precise, and easily understood. Feasibility, the capability of being done with conditions as they are, like probable, capable of being used to meet objectives. Okay, so it's time for some comments, questions, and clarifications. So, anyone? So, since there are no more questions and clarifications, so we'll start with our quiz. So, uh, arrange your chairs and prepare one for sheet of paper. Okay, so don't forget to write your name and the date. Okay, are you ready? Okay, number one. Uh, the instruction is to write only the letter of your answer. So, first question. It is the phase that final decisions are made as to content, strategies, activities, and instructional materials. A. Pre-planning phase. B. Active planning phase. C. Review planning. Or D. Closure planning. So, it is the phase that final decisions are made as to content, strategies, activities, and instruct instructional materials. A. Pre-planning. B. Active planning. Review planning or D, closure plan. Question number two. All institutional goals and objectives are geared toward the realization of the national development goals provided by the Katas Pamban Sampilan 22 Education Act of 1982. So, A, constitutional aims, B, institutional mission, C, curriculum goals, D, course or subject goals. All institutional goals or objects, objectives are geared toward the realization of the National Development Goals provided by the Batas Pamban Sa Bilang 232 Education Act of 1982. A. Constitutional Goals B. Institution Mission C. Curriculum Goals or D. Course or Subject Goals Question number 3 These objectives are usually formulated by the teacher also known as classroom objectives. Is it A, curriculum goals, B, course or subject goals, C, unit objectives, or D, lesson objectives? These objectives are usually formulated by the teacher, also known as classroom objective. A, curriculum goals, B, course or subject goals, C, unit objectives, or D, lesson objectives? Question number four. The domain of learning that deals with the development of attributes like genuine interest, desirable attitudes, values, and commitment as expected learning outcome. A. Cognitive B. Affective C. Psychomotor or D. None of the above 
the domain of learning that deals with the development of attributes like genuine interest, desirable attitudes, values, and commitment as expected learning outcome. A. Cognitive, B. Affective, C. Psychomotor, or D. None of the above. This criterion stresses the need for a specific goal rather than a more general one. The goal must be clear and unambiguous without unnecessary premise. A. Specific, B. Measurable, C. Attainable, or D. Relevant. So this criterion stresses the need for a specific goal rather than a more, a, rather than more a general one. A. The goal must, the goal must be clear and unambiguous without any sidetracks. A. Specific, B. Measurable, C. Attainable, or D. Relevant. Okay. So, pass your papers to the front. One, two. Three, four, five. Okay, so copy your assignments for the next lesson. For the next meeting. So, based on what you have learned from the discussion, answer the following questions. Write your answers in the one half sheet of paper. So, what is the importance of constructing appropriate objectives? And two, why is there a need for a lesson plan? Okay. So, we started with a prayer, so we'll end with a prayer. So, Father, Son, God is praying. Saint Joseph, pray for us.